Hello guys, in this video I am going to tell you certain niche areas in the medical field which are going uh, to become extinct and certain areas which are not going to become extinct. Let me tell you with a simple example. For example, Kodak cameras you must have heard you know, in a, some 20-30 years back. It was the number one company. But in the evolution what happened is the Kodak camera is replaced by the digital cameras which are introduced by Sony or whatever you say, Canon and all that. Kodak couldn't adapt to that because it's a film based model and it became extinct. In the same way, certain specialties in medical would actually slowly become extinct and certain specialties would survive. So in this video, what I am going to tell you is what specialties are going to stay relevant in future. Okay, that is what I am going to cover. So without any time waste, let me go into the specialties directly. Okay, I am talking about 10-20 years down the line. After 20-30 years, even nobody can predict. So the number one area which I feel which will be relevant even after 10-20 years is the minimal invasive surgery. Because what is happening is everybody when they come to hospital, they wouldn't be having any knowledge about the uh, surgery but they will ask, in, uh, I would want it to be done in a small incision. So that is the patient's request. So more and more uh, surgeries are actually become minimal invasive. So when I tell minimal invasive, it's not one specialty, it's an area and this can be in many specialties. For example, uh, it can be uh, in gastrointestinal surgery, it can be lab coli or lab bariatric surgery for weight loss. They can, they can be minimal invasive. In a colorectal, it will be laparoscopic cole, colectomy. In gynecological, it is a lap hysterectomy or myomectomy. In cardiothoracic, it is VATS or video assisted thoracoscopic surgery. Even bypass is done in minimal invasive ways nowadays. In spine surgery, there is uh, microdiscectomy, minimal invasive discectomy, and minimal, minimal invasive fusion. Okay, this is the area where I would be usually working on. Okay, and then um, orthopedics, you have orthoscopies and all, which are very, very minimi minimally invasive. And in neuro in neurosurgery also, there are endoscopic skull based surgeries and uh, you know endoscopic third ventriculostomies and you know uh, uh, deep brain stimulation placements and all that are minimal invasive. So, so what I'm trying to tell is minimal invasive surgery. If you can position yourself in any speciality, you will have a future profile. Okay. So in future, you shouldn't tell that I know everything. You have to tell that you are a minimal invasive surgeon. That's it. So in that way, you actually tell people that. So this is my branding, and this is what you have to come to me for. So that is how you have to project in future. Okay. And then even in ENT, you have endoscopic sinus surgeries and pediatrics. You have lap appendectomy. So it's. The projected requirement, for example, in future, uh, it's a predicted, uh, you know, model. So in the 30 to 40 percent growth is what we are looking at in minimal invasive surgeries, and uh, a lack of people would be required globally by 2040. So this is one area where you can position yourself. The next area would be interventional radiology. I already did a video in my channel with Adhira Sham. You can see that video. So interventional radiology, what happens is. So placement of stents, placement of you know, embolizations and uh, many cancer treatments and you know all this can be done with just a wire which is sent from the femoral artery or some whatever vessel. So this will stay relevant in future because it is less invasive and many people prefer to do uh, things in this way. So uh, like the global need is very high and the, the number of professionals required also is around 30 to 50,000 globally. So try to position in this area if you are a radiologist. Next, cardiology and interventional cardiology. So basically, cardiology, a uh, lot of saturation is happening in cardiology. I even, you know, writing a script for a particular video. And uh, interventional cardiology, I'm, I'm not talking about saturation now, but what I'm trying to tell you, the relevance in future would be there for interventional cardiology and electrophysiology, angioplasties and placing stunts. Even aortic valve and mitral valve, uh, Procedures also are being done by intervention cardiology. So cardiac surgery demand might come down, but intervention cardiology will be very, very relevant in future. Next speciality would be gastroenterology. So why I chose gastroenterology in this particular uh, video is that the inflammatory and irritable bowel disease is increasing because of the kind of foods that we guys are eating now. The pizzas, burgers and all western food you are trying to adopt here. So what's happening is because of that most of the people who have gastrointestinal problems in future and a lot of gastroenterologists are required and uh, the, like, around 40% increase of uh, gastroenterologist requirement is there and the digestive diseases are expected to impact 200 crore people globally it seems as a predicted calculation. So think about it, try to place yourself in gastroenterology and you will have a very very relevant future. Oncology, uh, oncology is a kind of speciality where 
The incidence of the disease itself is increasing by leaps and bounds. By 2040, the predicted uh, incidence would be 2.8 crore people uh, increasing annually and uh, like around 200 to 300 crore people would be having cancers in future. So a lot of people would be required. So try to position yourself in this oncology. The next area would be robotic surgery. So robotic surgeries are coming up. As I told in minimal ways, so all the list can be done with robots also. So if you can project yourself as a robotic surgeon, then you will have a very good future. And uh, very few centers in India actually do robotic. In uh, my center also, they do robotic surgery. So people come for training. So when they get trained in that, they go to some other area, they'll set up their department, right? So in this way, another 10 to 15 years, you're safe. Till AI takes over robots, I think. So till that time, you can stay relevant by doing robotic surgeries. A 50% increase of demand would be there in robotic surgery. So next, coming to next niche area, which is functional neurosurgery, like for Parkinson's disease, chronic pain, epilepsy, even uh, you know, binge eating, depression, functional neurosurgeries are coming where they place electrodes in different parts of the brains and uh, even the Neuralink and all that Elon Musk is working on, if they come, it should be done by a functional neurosurgeon. So by staying in this field, you stay very relevant in future. Okay. Next is uh, interventional uh, neuroradiology. So neuroradiology, inter neuro uh, radiology intervention is different. Neuroradiology intervention is different. So for this, you need to do DM in interventional neuroradiology. So here what happens is you deal with aneurysms, AVMs in the brain and you embolize and put coils there. Very relevant it will be in future because with very minimal ways you can finish the procedure. So if you understand the essence of the video, you understood that minimal invasive, minimal access surgeries would be more relevant in future and more future proved. Next is these specialties are not there now. What I'm going to tell you, lifestyle medicine, longevity and health medicine would come. Like longevity specialists would come because the life expectancy is increasing uh, you know, above 80 in many countries. And so we need people who actually deal the uh, older people. And not geriatric medicine I'm talking about. It's more like you know lifestyle they teach how to live and how to actually eat, how to exercise and taking care of your obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disorders and when age related uh, diseases increase. I think this kind of specialities also would flourish in future. Okay, our lifestyle medicine, longevity and health aging medicines are in India I don't think you have these kind of specialities, but you have to do fellowship in other countries. And if you can, you know, start some kind of a social media channel and popularize yourself and project start projecting in this area, you will develop a very good following, a very good OPD, and uh, you can cover you know significant number of patients in the area and do a lot of service to people because everyone is actually increasing. And uh, by 2040, 200 crore people would require a you know, longevity specialist, it seems, since the aging is increasing in different parts of the world. So that is about this particular video. So what I try to tell you is, it's not about doing OBG, doing this one. You have to position yourself in certain niche areas which will stay relevant in future. That is what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, it is not about, I can do everything. I will, if you tell like that in future, people will think you're a fool. So you have to tell the society that I am an expert in particular area. Please come to me for that. Okay, if and you have to also tell that I don't know a few things. Only in that way you can stay very relevant after 5 to 10 years. So the generalist approach might not work when you are coming to these sectors. Okay, so generalist, if you ask me, then they will have a role. I am not telling GP practice will stay in future and it might rather actually increase. But the thing is, if you want uh, to future proof, because GP will have a lot of uh, competition, right? You want to future proof, then this is the better way of doing it. And you can publish a lot of data, you will become an uh, international speaker and you can actually have a lot of following also in social media and this is how I think uh, you should do it. Thank you very much for following the video till now and if you come to this part of the video, I am putting a small link in the description. I am trying to actually help the um, PG students in uh, understanding the stipends in different hospitals in India. Please fill, it's a three question uh, survey I am conducting. I got 200 responses, I understood around. 160 to 170 colleges in India the stipends. I'm surprised to know that there are zero stipend also in many colleges. All the data will come out by end of this month. But if you can actually, uh, you know, fill that survey, it will help actually many people. I request you to fill that survey, and then uh, it will. If it touches 500, I can release a massive data about stipends in India. I already have massive data, but I want to make it more massive. Please fill that uh, small survey, it will take only 10 seconds maybe of your time and then please share it if you feel you want to help people. The whole channel intention is to not uh, you know, make money, it is to help uh, the juniors and you guys and students to actually 
choose a better career okay okay when i was studying there was nobody to in pass understand what specialties are there how to actually brand yourself how to actually grow in your career so then i thought i should actually do this for you guys that is why i'm doing this video thank you very much